is model based systems engineering and open standards with an electric vehicle case study so let me go into agenda so i'll be briefing a little bit about uh, uh, a model on then i will talk about the product development and system engineering concepts then uh, in general yeah. simulations in automotive design then modeling open standards uh, the basically open standards like modelica and fmi then the case study about multi objective modeling and dynamic system simulation of an electric pickup truck and if time permits i will go a little bit about uh, a demo of uh, model on impact and uh, covering the topics that we have seen earlier me about me as he already covered so i'll jump into about model on little bit so model on is an industry leader in model based systems engineering with the goal of advancing open standard technologies namely modelica and fmi allowing customers to leverage their tools of choice and share models through the product development cycle we serve a clientele base across a wide range of industry sectors which includes some of the world's largest companies so we have model on libraries your libraries are built on the uh, which called modelica and it delivers the state of art system models for a wide range of automotive aerospace industrial equipment energy and modelica libraries are supported many modelica based tools and are compatible with our modelica based modeling environment called modelica impact so so there is a tool called modelica impact which supports all our modelica based libraries our industry expertise range over different types of applications in different industries for example thermal management motor sports electric and hybrid vehicles etc in automotive then aircraft dynamics hybrid and electric propulsion fuel system etc in aerospace then thermal nuclear solar power plants renewable energy in power plant in energy sector natural commercial refrigeration in industry sector okay so let's jump on to actual uh, topics so i would like to cover about uh, product development concepts so to start with uh, concept of requirements for any products requirements are very basic elements and are at the center of the theme of the product okay so since my background is mostly in automotive industry so i will throughout i will use some of the use cases from automotive industry so let's take a case of automotive so <clears throat> look at the picture here so on the left hand side i we have a, a fender flap fender flaps marked on the right hand side we have roof rails and rear spoilers marked so do we really need these things in our cars if yes why so i'm not going to tell the answer now we can google and uh, and the answer is basically like uh, there is definitive pur purpose for these even small parts each and every part in the vehicle needs to be attached to a base requirement for example each bolt you add should be associated with a requirement or need so requirements basically help in making the design decisions what is my cost length what is my breadth uh, cost breadth height etc what is my car engine's power torque and speed limit etc so these questions can be answered by way of uh, capturing the requirements okay then jumping on to next topic within product development is about life cycles so product development basically follows certain idealized life cycles um, uh, basically in uh, product development uh, manufacturing companies so they follow sequential product development methods and actual process can vary between different manufacturers so cycles are comparable with uh, software development life cycles like waterfall method or b model product requirements are captured and frozen at the start of the development each individual phase will have to wait for the previous phase to be completed contrary to waterfall method v model put up, put most us on modular design and testing at each stage so on the left hand side i have listed the waterfall method and the right hand side i have listed the v model basically what this slide uh, is saying so in general uh, the product development is following sequential product development so one phase has to wait for the other phase to be completed but contrary to waterfall method v model has more stress on uh, the testing of your uh, design and at each phases you got uh, more number of uh, test phases and uh, at each level of your design so you have a corresponding test phase okay so little, little bit about about complexities of product today's product development so today's vehicle development 
again i'm taking a case of automotive so today's vehicle development needs to satisfy multiple customer and legal ad- objectives for example in, in a typical car a customer would like to see what is the efficiency of the car what is the performance of the car uh, how the drivability is uh, how the safety and comfort uh, metrics are so often these objectives are mutually exclusive like better fuel economy may cause bad performance better performance may cause bad drivability better handling performance may cause bad ride comfort uh, etc vice versa and today's vehicle development need to integrate multiple components and it involves complex technologies covering multiple domains so for example today's car actually involves domains like mechanical electrical thermal controls etc in order to satisfy the above objectives and also in today's product development uh, it needs to be accelerated not to meet the growing competition among their competitors okay then what is the solution to address the complexities so the solution is basically following system engineering principles in the design process so traditionally product development sees individual departments working in silos that means independently on their components just focusing on to fulfill their component requirements for example let's assume in the vehicle development uh, company so you got an engine team focuses on their own requirements and work independently with less interaction with other teams like uh, transmission team or drive line teams okay then what will happen so this component focused development approach may yield better components but at the end of the day when assembled together it may lead to system level complexities or system level failures due to incompatible transmission or incompatible drive line so solution is to take the top down approach of thinking and designing a product as a whole system so instead of looking at individual component or uh, uh, teams working in silos teams working in, uh, independently so we need to take a top down approach and uh, think the product as a system in simple terms system engineering encourages to look at a product as a single system or a holistic system rather than integration of independent components the design process starts with the system level requirements and these requirements are functionally decomposed into subsystem level requirements then design and verification takes place both at component levels and at system levels system engineering basically ensures creation of better systems on one hand and also better components on the other hand so traditional v cycle uh, which we have seen in the earlier uh, slide still holds good for this kind of uh, system engineering driven development so systems approach works not only for this product development but also to study about general systems that we see in the real real world for example environment system political system healthcare system human body itself as a system etc even simple real life problems can be effectively addressed if we start to take the holistic approach in dealing with the those problems okay so next to talk about model based systems engineering that that's our main topics model based systems engineering so far we covered general product, product development concepts product development life cycle then system engineering then we will learn now about the model based systems engineering so there is an organization called incosi international council for systems engineering they term model based systems engineering as formalized application of modeling to support system requirements design analysis verification and validation activities beginning in the conceptual design phase and continuing throughout the development and later life cycle phases so basically they are saying that <clears throat> application of models in each phase of your product development so then what is called model a physical mathematical or otherwise logical representation of a system entity phenomenon or process is basically called model it can be a requirement model it can be architectural model or it can be a system simulation model or the very well known cat model or ca models which are all used in the design process so mbsc the short form of model based system engineering promotes use of component and system models in each phase of the development cycle so that iterative and intermediate verification of the product design is made possible by the simulation of the models so here again the v cycle is listed um so <clears throat> on the left hand side is your actual design and on the right hand side is your uh, verification so here you see contrary to the previous slide previous v cycle you see intermediate loops basically that means that iterative i mean basically iterative verification process so since we are going to use models in each phase for example requirement models at requirement stage 
architecture models and at architectural stage, then uh, system models at system stage, component models at component design stage, then the same model can be utilized in the verification phase also. So basically like uh, it improves your design process. You are able to like uh, identify the failures, failure modes in your design as early as possible in your uh, design. That means that on the left hand side itself, so that when you go on the right hand side, so you will you will literally see less number of defects in your design. So this is called in product development domain, it's called um, front loaded design or left shifting of design. Okay. okay. So since we have talked about models and simulations, I think it, it, it's, it may be uh, suitable to talk about uh, simulations and go, go deep into simulations. So, <clears throat> So I would like to cover a little bit about, about uh, simulations in automotive design. The role of simulations in automotive design. So it reduces extensive physical testing, avoid manual errors during testing, save design and testing cost, reduce the lead time to product development. And you can see the pictures, the different simulations are being used in automotive design. And it supports product innovation also. So types of simulations used in automotive design the very well known finite element analysis. So finite, it, it follows finite element method solving partial differential equations. Applications range uh, crash analysis, durability analysis, NVH analysis, electromagnetic analysis, etc. Then other sim type of simulation is called computational fluid dynamics. So it's basically finite volume method solving uh, partial differential equations. Applications range among aerodynamics, cooling, climate control and lubrication. Then uh, there is one type of simulation called multi-body dynamics. So it's basically mechanism modeling uses, using bodies, joints and forces. It requires solving of differential and algebraic equations and application range among uh, suspension design for handling and right comfort tuning, etc. So basically I categorize these simulations as, as like a, uh, three-dimensional modeling and simulation of physical system because these models require three-dimensional model, uh, either CAD model or uh, three-dimensional multi-body models. The next type of simulation is called system simulation where uh, modeling of system physics covering multiple domains is possible. It requires solving of ordinary differential equations. It can do both dynamic simulation and steady state simulations and applications range among uh, concept design, attribute simulation, system sizing and, and optimization, controls verification, etc. Then another type of simulation people generally use in product development scenarios are called controls algorithm simulation, where nowadays the <coughs> sophisticated electronic, uh, electronic control units are basically modeled using uh, um, simulation tools that's called algorithm modeling. And they are verified in different levels like model in loop verification, software in loop verification, R in the loop verification. And, and basically, I mean, it involves continuous and discrete control system modeling. And applications would be like uh, different controls in, in today's vehicle, for example, brake, brake controls, suppressor controls, battery controls, etc., battery management system, etc. And I categorize these simulations as 0D, uh, zero dimensional. It's called error driven models and one dimensional transfer function state space types of modeling of physical system. So both type of simulations are modeling of physical system. So one is basically require uh, three dimensional models and other these two require basically like a zero dimensional or one dimensional models. Okay. So where this dynamic system simulation actually uh, can be positioned among the entire uh, uh, space of uh, simulation within automotive design. Okay. So I have an X, Y, Z graph so where on the X axis I have controls and the Y axis I have amplitude and the, uh, and the, uh, and the Y axis on, I, I'm having frequency and the Z axis I'm having amplitude. Okay. So uh, beyond around 30 gets of system frequency and beyond certain level of amplitude. So we need this three dimensional based modeling and simulations. For example, in the large amplitude simulations can be like uh, crash simulations, durability durability simulations and the large frequency simulations can be called like as NV simulations, etc. But within this um, uh, 
uh, uh, within the scope of like uh, less than 30 gigahertz system frequency, we can involve these zero dimensional, one dimensional multi body system models, and uh, which can include almost all of the controls that that is being used in in today's products. So system simulation basically bridges the gap between your three dimensional world and the controls world. So basically, if you see in this in the <clears throat> in this understanding, your system simulation is basically trying to bridge your three dimensional simulations with your controls controls world. It interacts with both structural and controls worlds. It provides boundary conditions to three dimensional simulations. It has some connection with between uh, with the three dimensional models also. The system simulation can be used to provide boundary conditions to 3D simulations. And these system simulation models are used in controls development also. In order to verify your controls, uh, um, basically these system simulation models are also used. It also provides insight how system behaves in different dynamic conditions so that concept evaluation, component sizing and optimization are, are made possible by this. As a latest, system simulation models are used to train artificial intelligence algorithms to make digital twins. So simulations are much faster than 3D, three-dimensional based finite element analysis and CFD simulations. Basically, FE and CFD simula simulations take a longer time to simulate, but these system simulation models are a bit faster. Okay, so we, we have covered about uh, product development concepts, we have covered about modeling and we have covered about uh, simulation, system simulation. Now we will get into some uh, modeling open standards. So I'm going to talk about a couple of open standards called uh, Modelica and FMI. So open standards play important roles in realizing successful MBAC since an open-minded integrated approach is required from the start of the development in order to tackle complexities. So we covered about uh, complexities in today's product development and we covered the need of uh, systems engineering and model based system engineering in the product development and this basically requires like uh, open mindset and uh, um, integrated approach from the start of the development and modelica an open standard and fmi another open standard these basically help in achieving this um, <coughs> um, this this approach so modelica an open standard object oriented intuitive physical modeling language simplifies multi-domain dynamic system modeling and allows easy integration with other design artifacts. So FMI being an open standard, file exchange format simplifies model portability among different design and simulation tools. So I have a few slides covering uh, both of these open standards. So what is Modelica? So Modelica is a free modeling language developed and owned by the Modelica Association. It's a non-profit organization. Around 80 members are there, uh, mostly industrial uh, companies, uh, <coughs> industries. Active development through the Modelica Design Group and develops the largest free library for multi-domain models, the Modelica Standard Library. And the Modelica language, it's basically an object-oriented modeling language. It's a causal and equation-based language, supports multi-domain and modular modeling. For more information, we should look at modelica.org. So Modelica ecosystem. So on one hand, we got tools that supports the Modelica language. Modelica itself is not a tool, it's a language. And there are tools to support the Modelica language. So for example, there are a lot of commercial and open source tools. So one is called Modelon Impact, provided, provided by Modelon. Then there are other tools. Then uh, there are model libraries, which were developed based on the Modelica language. And almost all of the tools can support these libraries. And uh, to list few Modelica tools available, so commercial libraries, Marlon Impact, Katia Daimola, Imaging Lab, etc. And there are free Marlika environments also like Open Marlika, Psychos, etc. And what of Marlika? So as I mentioned, Marlika itself is not a tool, it's a language, but we need a tool to support the language. So in any Marlika tool, we got a graphical and simulation editor, uh, which basically <coughs> the Marlika simulation environment, it can be a free or commercial tool. And uh, Behind the scene, there will be a textual description of the models, which follows the Marlika language. So it's basically physical equation based modeling. You can see on the left hand side, there is a typical, uh, there is an example Marlika model. So each icon here represents the physical component. For example, there is an electrical resistance, mechanical device, pump, motor, gear, etc. And the connection lines between these components basically represent the, represents the actual physical coupling 
like uh, wire in case of electrical modeling, fluid flow, heat flow, etc. A component consists of connected subcomponents. So inside components, there can there may be further subcomponents, and and it is described and the and the the least level of component is basically described by equations. That the equations follow the molecular language. So begin the component set of equations representing the physics of the components. For example, in this case, so if you see inside the gear component here, there are like a couple of components. Uh, there is a lossy gear component and elastic backlash component. And if you <clears throat> go through the, the textual description of the elastic backlash, then you get to see the actual physics model or physics type with the modelical language. So for example, for uh, uh, elastic backlash, basically has like a, um, spring and damper. So we got equations for uh, spring and damper, physics equations for spring and damper. So physical modeling versus block oriented modeling. So Marlika is basically a castle modeling. So it's a declarative language that just requires the developer to define the problem at a high, higher level and leaves solution to the simulation tool. Whereas the block oriented modeling, so you need to define the order of the calculations. Like for example, the next slide. So, uh, for example, here the flexible shaft is modeled in terms of uh, the equations in block oriented modeling, whereas it is simply a, a component to drag upon. And to begin the scene, you got physical equations without any directionality. You write the equation and it will work. The two simulation tool will take care of the, the processing. Okay. So uh, since we talked about uh, the Mollica as a language, so should we need to uh, go and type the language in every possible case? No, it's not required. There are building blocks already. There are free building blocks provided by Mollica Association itself. It's called Mollica Standard Library. So which cover almost entire uh, possible engineering domains, for example, electrical domain, magnetic domain, mechanics, fluid, media, thermal, etc. So the, these have got plenty of building blocks. And you can simply drag and drop the blocks and you can connect them together. You can create a system model. On top of this free st standard library, there are plenty of libraries available in the Malika community. So some are free and some are commercial. So um, uh, there are plenty of libraries. So Modlan provides um, a few commercial libraries. Um, and you can even uh, get to see there are libraries outside of common engineering domains like uh, human physiology libraries there, biochemical libraries there, etc. In general, commercial tools and libraries are always suggested for industry deployable solutions, while free libraries and tools always can be uh, uh, used as a starter or uh, not to explore Modelica. Then going into next topic uh, of open standard, uh, it's called functional mockup interface, FMI. It is a sister, sister technology to Modelica, maintained by Modelica Association, standardized way for models from several tools to interact. So. <clears throat> It has two methods to interact, co-simulation and model exchange. In co-simulation, each model contains in its own uh, solver or integrator. And model exchange models from several tools integrated by one master. Allows for export and import of models to and from simulation environments that does not support Modelica. Example, for example, uh, you got plenty of simulation tools. So the FMI provides the way to connect between those tools, okay? For example, the Malika environment can be integrated with Excel environment or MATLAB Simulink or Adam, Simpack, CarMaker, etc. So again, in order to find more details, so uh, one would like to see uh, www.fmistandard.org, their website. So it's basically like extend the family of collaborative software. So on one hand, you got Modelica supporting tools. On the other hand, you got uh, other commercial tools. Then uh, the FMI provides the way to like integrate these uh, uh, tools or, or the models developed in these tools. Okay, so so far we have covered product development concepts, model basis engineering, then uh, uh, modeling open standards. So now let's go into a case study where I would like to talk about multi-objective system modeling and dynamic simulation of an electric pickup truck. So we use these technologies, Modelica uh, and FMI, and we created a model to mimic uh, a real world uh, example of an electric pickup truck. So we try to model an upcoming electric pickup truck. So pickup truck, you can see this picture, you can uh, um, uh, relate to this picture. 
So uh, it's basically an electric pickup truck. And we referred the data available online for this vehicle and incorporated very detailed multi-body and multi-domain models for this vehicle. And this model is able to predict different uh, attributes basically uh, of this vehicle. For example, range of the vehicle, performance of the vehicle, drivability, feel of the vehicle, handling performance of the vehicle and ride comfort of the vehicle. So as I mentioned, these attributes almost like cover the less than 30 gauge frequency of that particular vehicle. So this is the top level um, view of that model. So <clears throat> you got powertrain as a as a uh, top level subsystem and chassis as top level subsystem and brakes. And these models used model on commercial libraries called vehicle dynamics library, electrification library, and liquid cooling library. So this, these models involve like both multi-body and multi-domain based models. And it followed modular approach capturing least components like suspension members, tires, drivetrain drive shaft, joints, etc. So it is detailed enough for the studies intended. And it is configurable to pick right fidelity to speed up the simulation. So basically like, so we simulated five different attributes so we varied the fidelity of the uh, components so that, for example, for uh, range simulation, we may not need a detailed chassis model. For uh, ride comfort simulation, we may not need a detailed uh, powertrain model. So we varied the complexity of the model and we were able to perform the simulations. And, and as I mentioned, this contained detailed architecture capturing the least components so that the scalability in the in, in future is, is made easy here. So to talk about a little bit about uh, the powertrain of this vehicle, so this vehicle has like uh, four electric motors powering each car, each wheel of uh, the, the vehicle um, and it has uh, its own uh, motor and uh, transmission um, connected to the uh, each axle and at the center it has a big battery, battery pack and uh, it is being effectively cooled by um, uh, cooling system um, and uh, this cooling system is also cooling the individual motors also. And we got a powertrain controller, uh, which which actively varies the torque that goes into each motor in order to like uh, uh, help the vehicle in, in um, stabilizing uh, during corners. And DC machine, uh, which is basically like a, a 140 kilo, 147 kilowatt uh, uh, power motor and uh, 140 newton meter torque uh, of motor then uh, it can take maximum current of 400 ampere and the modeling again uh, uh, it's a bit detailed so we capture we, we capture the core model uh, model of the motor characteristic and also the thermal and the electrical characteristics of the motor so transmission so it contains a single speed gear with the ratio of 12.5 uh, and uh, we included uh, gear compliance and backlash etc so battery pack again um, it's a big battery battery pack so it has like 119 cells in series 49 cells in parallel with 105 kilowatt hour uh, uh, battery capacity and we model the um, uh, battery characteristics in detail uh, up to cell level along with uh, the thermal thermal ca uh, characteristics of the battery so powertrain controller as i mentioned we included a um, torque vectoring based powertrain controller in order to help the vehicle to steer during tight corners. So which basically like sense the uh, wheel slip and uh, or the slip angle variation and it, uh, it basically varies the torque that goes into each motor of the, uh, of the vehicle. And the powder and cooling system. So again, it's a it detailed cooling system model here um, uh, and it, it has a, a radiator helping the cooling system uh, when required. And chassis model, so this contain uh, um, uh, front double wishbone and rear filing suspension. Uh, and uh, this is the suspension and tires are uh, model in detail. So suspension, again, it's air suspension uh, uh, since it's a pickup truck. And, and individual details are modeled in multi-body fashion. Uh, tires, we used Paseka tire model and it's a bit detailed to capture all the uh, Simulation that, simulations that we would like to see. 
and this is the multi party visualization of the vehicle so as i mentioned the battery pack is basically placed at the center of the vehicle then you got four motors at four corners um, along with the transmission and uh, powering individual axles so these models are uh, uh, validated using uh, bench and unit test cases but we didn't have any uh, real world test data to um, uh, correlate against but if you get the test data we can correlate so finally we take the model and we um, uh, we apply it down to the test setup so that we can do the simulations that we intended basically we need to attach it to a driver model and uh, and environment model and a road model uh, in order to drive the simulations the first simulation that we did it's a rain simulation so uh, basically we we drive the vehicle <coughs> uh, on a drive cycle repeat repeated nedc drive cycle uh, until the battery gets depleted or uh, it reaches the lowest soc uh, then we observe the vehicle range that uh, the range uh, in kilometers that the vehicle is able to uh, attain so basically it was able to attain 182 miles uh, with the 70% usable soc and uh, throughout uh, the battery temperature is able to be maintained uh, within 50 degree celsius with the use of uh, uh, cooling system and controls and the next simulation is from performance simula simulation is basically like applying the full throttle acceleration and uh, and the key metrics observed were like 0 to 60 miles per hour was achieved in 5.35 seconds and 0 to 100 miles per hour was achieved in 10 seconds and the drivability So basically, like it's similar to uh, full throttle acceleration, but uh, we let the vehicle to like uh, stable in a in a in a constant speed. Then we suddenly the driver suddenly applies the throttle at about like under percent uh, throttle condition, uh, so that it excites your drive line into shuffle motion. So uh, <clears throat> so here you can see uh, the shuffle movement because of that uh, sudden uh, throttle application by the driver. and it is experienced throughout uh, different um, uh, variables in, in in the simulation so example uh, vehicle speed uh, in motor speed and uh, vehicle uh, longitudinal accelerations etc the key metrics like uh, the shuffle frequency is observed at around 1.4 hertz which is within the human perceivable range and if you see here this plot Uh, uh the pitch rate of uh, motor vehicle and uh, uh, um, uh, driver level uh, uh, accelerations are plotted uh, and you can see that the motor it tends to pitch more than what driver used to see so that, that that's basically typical uh, what what we experience in the actual vehicle and handling simulation so here uh, we are driving uh, the vehicle around a tight corner at at uh, high constant uh, speed uh, but again uh, here uh, we have simulated two scenarios one with uh, proportional control uh, another with the uh, torque vectoring control that i discussed in the previous slide um, so basically like the proportional control you don't actively vary the torque that goes into each motor so that uh, taking corner will be bit difficult uh, clearing the corner will be bit difficult but in case of uh, torque vectoring control you are actively varying the uh, torque that uh, that goes into individual motor and you are able to i mean the vehicle is able to like uh, um, clearly um uh, pass through the corner yeah there is a uh, animation here so the green uh, car basically uh, incorporates the torque vectoring control and it is able to uh, uh, pass through the corner uh, without hitting the uh, uh, without going into sideways the next simulation we that we performed is right comfort so where we 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 drive the vehicle um, um, along series of bumps in the road and uh, let the um, um, uh, different parts of the vehicle uh, to see the vibration of that uh, road imperfections and capture the different frequencies that we observed uh, from from uh, um, uh, different parts of the vehicle for example so we measure frequency at uh, motor level frequency at uh, vehicle center of gravity level and at uh, at driver level the key metrics that we observed here like the vertical acceleration uh, root mean square value is around like 1.95 meter per second square uh, which is actually tolerate tolerable for humans if it goes beyond that it, it will become intolerable uh, then uh, the sprung mass frequency is at around 1 hertz this is basically uh, uh, 
uh, designed by your uh, suspension system. Uh, again, this is this is again in an acceptable range. And then uh, road induced frequencies at around eight hertz. Uh, and we have plotted the vehicle acceleration at driver seat, uh, which is less compared to the vehicle level and motor level, which is actually uh, um, desirable. The driver should feel less vibration compared to the other parts of the vehicle. Okay, yeah. an animation here. Results and summary discussion. So we, as I discussed, so we are we, <clears throat> we we achieved some results and we try to compare it to some reference values announced for that particular uh, vehicle. It's still yet to be a released vehicle. So we were able to match almost the numbers uh, for range and uh, the performance, even without the proper data uh, or with less data available online okay for uh, for range and acceleration for drivability it's it's a subjective matrix and it falls within the uh, uh, human perceivable range uh, uh, applicable for this class of vehicle and handling safety uh, again it's subjective here uh, ride comfort again um, as i mentioned uh, it is within the literature uh, reference range okay so next to the ne ne next thing to discuss about like why are we doing these kind of simulations basically like in, during the design process so you do these kind of uh, simulations in design process in order to uh, verify your uh, 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 parameter configurations. So for example, in this case, we, we started with one particular set of configuration uh, and we simulated these scenarios, but, uh, uh, but there may be possibility in changing the parameters, for example, tuning the suspension stiffness, suspension damping, etc. And you, you will be able to vary your handling performance or your ride comfort performance. So that kind of uh, uh, tunability and uh, parameter sweeps, etc., you can do using these uh, models. And these are helpful in design process. And also, as I mentioned, there are like uh, many objectives and there are many parameters in the vehicle. So how to find the trade-off, how to find the best possible configurations that can be actually analyzed using these models with the help of some optimization tools also. So for example, uh, uh, you can you can run uh, degrees of uh, uh, design of experiments or optimization runs over these models and you, and you can vary the uh, uh, parameters in a wide range and you can uh, arrive at optimal configuration so that you get a better range uh, by not affecting your performance and you can you get you can get better handling by not affecting your ride comfort etc so these are kind of like trade off uh, uh, that we need to do during design process and also these models uh, help in uh, not only in design optimization these models are used in, uh, these models are used in controls a tuning um, um, uh, and artificial intelligence uh, uh, training programs, etc. So, as I mentioned in uh, 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 previous slides. So, uh, <clears throat> I think we got uh, five more minutes. So, I will try. I would like to do a little demo in in, in our tool. Um, uh, the uh, uh, Marlan, it's called Marlan Impact, and uh, uh, it's Molika based uh, tool. So, this is Marl Marlan Impact. So where uh, you can see uh, Morlon's commercial libraries available here, along with the Modelica standard library here. So this is what uh, Modelica standard library I talked in one of the slides. So this covers almost all possible engineering domains, uh, having uh, uh, covered all the uh, uh, building blocks for those domains. For example, if you go into electrical domain, so it has got a basic analog components, uh, digital components, machine models, etc. Then if you go into mechanics, uh, it is divided into three domains, multi-body, rotational, and trans translational. And each domain has a, um, its own building blocks. For example, in, in rotational, you got like inertia, spring, damper, clutch, gear models, etc. So likewise, so as I mentioned, so just simply drag and drop these building blocks and you can build your system model. So you don't need to like uh, always go into the equation layer and type equations uh, in most of the cases. You may need to do for advanced usage, uh, but only for uh, complex systems, which are not already captured in the libraries. So likewise, like this free library, there are commercial libraries covering uh, uh, individual domains, for example, electrification, uh, vapor cycle, vehicle dynamics, hydraulics, etc. 
and uh, you will have you will get to have the building blocks and example models in those libraries for those particular domains so i will i will try to like uh, uh, take one example here um in the multibody uh, mechanics multibody just like uh, uh, show some results so there is a robot model a full robot model here uh, so uh, <clears throat> so basically for example it has like a six axis and if you go into the component so it has further sub components it has got each individual motor and gear attached to that particular axis of the robot uh, and these are these are all driven by a particular controller and uh, um, this is attached to a multi body model of uh, uh, robot ha uh, uh, hand basically so uh, this is this is basically done with the bodies and uh, joints and i already simulated uh, let me plot some results from this so here you can see um, uh, speed okay since it is controlled so you got like actual value versus control uh, reference value for uh, for the axis speed uh for the axis angle and for uh, the uh, the axis and the, the current that goes into motor let's see some animation here uh so after the simulation so so what do you basically uh, uh, do on the on the modeling and simulation layer that's what you see as a response in the animation layer so likewise i let call one more quick example from wiggle dynamics library uh, where uh, a double lane change experiment so where the vehicle is actually being driven uh, with the driver inputs so driver is taking and the vehicle into a uh, series of cones in order to clear the cones uh, in a double lane change ma um, uh, manner so these are some of the outputs that we get from the simulation for example this is the steering angle that driver follows and this is the lateral acceleration that the vehicle uh, 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 respond back so you can see the animation also here so you can see like uh, there is a road uh, then there is a uh, car model um, okay so i think it's better uh, <clears throat> so just just like try to clear the cones in the simulation yeah so so this way you can verify your uh, design in different uh, uh, test scenarios so that's the purpose okay so getting back to the uh, slides again so i'll to conclude so we have covered for product development concepts uh, and we talked about mbsc we talked about uh, different simulations used in automotive design and role of dynamic simulation system simulation we talked about the importance of open standards in mbsc uh, and uh, we covered a case study of uh, electric pickup truck uh, modeling an electric pickup truck and uh, simulating uh, different scenarios of that uh, vehicle um, like range performance reliability handling and ride comfort and uh, and we also discussed how these models can be utilized in multiple ways like concept evaluation system sizing optimization control development and a training etc so thanks for your patience so i think we got like 10 more minutes so if you have any questions you can ask now uh, otherwise you can also reach out to me uh, uh, at my email id leverson.dharmasilandmodelon.com and also you can go through our website uh, www.modelon.com/contactus page thank you yeah so dimodel is another commercial tool like modelon impact so which supports modelica based modeling is another environment yeah 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 so there is open source called open modelica Uh, which which students definitely can uh, uh, start explore and uh, commercial tools also if we contact the uh, company i think uh, yeah uh, we, yeah we can see about the evaluation etc yeah uh, see so we got like this free uh, modelica standard library which has got those examples and building blocks in in modeling any mechanical system so with that i think uh, yeah people students can explore now it's time for a word of thanks in this juncture I like to thank Mr. Elavarasan for accepting our request and delivered a beautiful and informative lecture session. I hope the building engineers have introduced to a new world of model based systems engineering including modelica language and its library and FMI with case study. This area is new to all students and even for faculties in universities. 
it was interesting to know about modeling of powertrain brakes multi-body visualization and finally with an attribute simulation that was more interesting getting how to analyze the output data from various attributes regarding the right comfort is an added thing now i like to thank the people behind this webinar miss sinduja hr and mr elangelian of modelon and professor dr m uttakumaran head of the department and dr v nagarajan principal janson institute of technology for making this webinar to happen thank you all for joining with us stay tuned with jit edu youtube channel for more webinars and have a happy learning thank you all